Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Josh This Coding. In today's video, we are going to be continuing on with our wave-based survival series. In today's video, we are going to be creating a UI to display the current wave, the progress of the wave, and also showing the timer between now and the next wave once the wave is finished. So let's jump straight on into it. We're going to go ahead and come to our blueprints folder, come to our players folder, come to our player UI folder, and we are going to go ahead and add a new widget. So we'll come to user interface, come to widget blueprint, user widget, and we will call this WBP underscore. Uh, we're actually going to call this player HUD because in the future we're going to be adding more to this UI than just the waves. This is also going to be the UI that holds the health bar and whatnot. So we're going to go ahead and add a canvas panel. So for now, we're just going to keep this super simple. We're not going to make it look super fancy. Of course, you are more than free to do that if you would like. So in the top left, I'm just going to say that we have our current wave. So I'll call this text current wave text. And we are going to need to make this a variable as we're going to be using it in our event graph. So we just need to hit this little checkbox beside the name. We're then going to add a, another text and we'll call this wave progress text. And again, this needs to be a variable. So what we're going to want to do here is simply add a horizontal box. And we are going to place both of our texts into this horizontal box. We will then scale up our horizontal box to whatever size we would like it to be. Just like this. So essentially what using a horizontal box does is it will automatically be able to adjust the order and like the spacing between various texts. So for example, you can see here that current wave is on the left. Let's just add a current wave as a temp text. You can see if we wanted to move it to the right, we can just hit this button and we'll go to the right. We can then move it back. So inside the details panel, we'll actually want to, at the very top, there's the size button. We want to hit fill and we'll want to do the same with the other button. We will then want to add some padding to the right of the current wave text. So we'll just go ahead and add 50 like so. And we'll actually adjust the horizontal box just so we have some more space to work with here. And then we don't need to add any padding to this text, but just as temp text, I'll put enemies killed zero out of 10. Just the temp text so we can get a sense of how big this might be. And then we'll just adjust the scale of our box accordingly. We might not actually need this padding now that we've increased the size. We don't, perfect. So we can just remove that padding from here. So what we need to do now is we actually need to set up the text to get the current wave and also set up the text to get the enemies killed this wave. So what we're going to go ahead and do is super simple. We are going to, for the text, hit bind. We will create a binding. And we will rename this function to get current wave, what we'll do is we will then come over to the event graph. We can get rid of preconstruct and event tick nodes as those aren't needed. We will get game mode. We will cast to our game mode, which is BP third person game mode. And we can just promote this return value to a variable which we will call BP third person game mode. So 
essentially what a binding does is it's going to constantly check for whatever we do in here and apply this return value. So in the future, during an optimization video, I might go over better ways of doing this by using event dispatchers, say, to get when a wave starts and just incrementing it when a new wave starts. But for now, to keep it simple, we're just going to use this binding. So in here, we can get the third person game mode and we can just get current wave. We can just hook this up to the return value. It will automatically add a to text node here and we can compile and save this. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the enemy's kill text. We are going to bind, create bind, and we'll call this get wave progress text. We'll do the exact same thing, but this time we'll get the wave progress text. We are going to get the enemies. Um, sorry, I meant we need to get the game mode, not the wave progress text. We are going to get enemies killed this wave. We're also going to get max enemies in wave. And what we'll want to do is use a two string for both of these guys. And we will then want to use the strings append logic, which allows you to combine multiple strings into one string. So enemies killed this wave. Then we'll add in a slash. And then we'll add in the max enemies in the wave. So essentially, what this will say if we've killed 5 out of 10 enemies is 5 slash 10. And we can then hook up the return value of the append to the return value on the return node. If we compile and save this, we can actually jump straight over to our player blueprint. And up here, we're going to do similar to what we did right here. We're going to get player controller. We are going to create WBP, or so we're going to create widget. We will then set the class to WBP player HUD. And we will add to viewport. Now, in the future, just looking at this code, we'll probably want to move our crosshair into our HUD when we expand the HUD class. Before now, we can just leave it like so. So now, if we run our game, you can see we are currently on wave 1 in the top left, and we've killed 0 out of 10 enemies. If we kill an enemy, we're now at 1 out of 10, 2 out of 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So, the next thing we can do is create a UI for when you're in the middle of a wave countdown like this, so that it doesn't just suddenly jump to 2 and then 0 out of 20 like you saw there. The way we can do this, if we come back to our player HUD, is we can add in a text. And I'm going to put this in the center of the screen. Just like so. To make sure it's dead center, what you can do is come to your anchor. Select the one right in the middle. We can then reset the position. Set the alignment to 0 0.5. 0 0.5. And we can then just increase the Y. Or we want to do negative on the Y to put it at the desired height. I will then call this countdown to next wave text. So what we're going to go ahead and do is once again create a bind for this and I'll actually just add an attempt text countdown or we'll say next wave in 
and we'll just say all right this was also offset a bit since we just adjusted the size of it so I'll just put that back in the middle All right, so we'll now create a binding for this text as well. However, this text will be slightly different. So the first thing we'll want to do, just like before, is rename this function. And we'll get, we'll say, get countdown to next wave. From here, what we can do is get our game mode. And we'll actually want to get the timer handle we created in the other video. Uh, let me just find what we called that. We come over to our spawn enemy. We have our when we kill our enemy, we check if the wave is finished. If it is, we start the delay to the next round, which we actually don't have a timer handle for right now. So in our third person game mode, we want to come to the event we created, start delay until next round. And for the set timer, we want to promote this to a variable and we'll call this time until next wave or time until next wave timer handle. We can then compile and save this, come back to our UI, and we can now get time until next wave timer handle. We can then get remaining time by handle. And we can return this. Now, I'm not going to worry about adding decimals. Um, so I'm just going to convert this to an integer. So what we want to do is from this return value is go ahead and call round and we can then go ahead and do a two string we will once again use the strings append and this is actually going to go into b not a just give ourselves a bit more space here so in a we'll say next wave starts in and then we will hook up this number We'll then once again add the return value of the append to the return node and we can compile and save this. Now we only want this text to appear if there's not an active wave. So what we can do is actually in the details panel search for visibility and we'll create a binding for visibility. What we'll do here is say get countdown to next wave visibility. And what we'll go ahead and do is get the game mode. We will check if we have completed the wave the same way we do in our game mode. So we'll get enemies killed this wave. Actually, there's probably a better way we can do this now that I think about it, which is we can get our newly created timer handle. So get, or we can just get time until next wave timer handle. We can check is active. So if it is active, then we will say that the visibility is true. If it is not active, we'll say the visibility is hidden. Now, if we run the game, you can see it is not hidden by default, but if we just go ahead and clear out a wave, you will see that it comes as well and does its countdown. We can just clear out the wave. One last guy, and you can see we now have this countdown that appears, 
next wave starts, it does the countdown. As soon as the countdown finishes, it's going to go invisible, and the numbers in the top left will update. We could also go ahead and set the visibility of the numbers in the top left to go hidden when the next wave is starting. But I'm just going to leave them visible for now. If you want to hide them, you can do the exact same thing we just did for setting the visibility of the countdown, except inverse it. All right, so that's going to do it for today's video. In the next video, we are going to go ahead and actually get our enemies to start chasing the player. So if you do want to see that, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions on how I can improve these videos or if you have any questions. With that said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and good luck with your game.